TILFA for LDP and IP traffic. So TILFA not only works for the segment routing, but it works for the non-segment routing traffic as well, like LDP and IP traffic. Let's deep dive it further. So it can provide protection to LDP or unlabeled IP4 or IP6 traffic. To achieve it, some criteria we should meet before providing the TILFA for the CLDP and unlabeled IP4 traffic. The PLR router which is providing protection should be the SR capable device. And the destination which are in the LDP domain should have the prefixed available in the segment routing domain. For unlabeled IP4 or IP6, we don't need any prefixes for that one because anyhow it is unlabeled. Because if you trace, you will see that there is no packet pushing MPLS packet pushing on top of that traffic, so it is completely unlabeled. So we don't need any prefixes for that. But the but for the prefixes which are available in the LDP domain, we need the prefixes available in segment routing domain so it can be achieved if those destinations are sr capable and ldp capable as well which is very unlikely and we can achieve that one using the mapping server so mapping server will advertise the prefixed entries for these non ld uh, non segment routing prefixes like which are there in the LDP domain and then whole segment routing domain can use that prefix it for those prefix and then last criteria is either it could be P, Q or PQ node so these nodes should be SR capable So to provide the LDP uh, a TILFA protection for the LDP, we must need to follow all these three criteria. And to provide the protection for the unlabeled IPv4 and IPv6 traffic, we must need to follow the first one and last criteria. So this is the lab topology which I am going to demonstrate. So let's first talk about the LDP traffic. So in this lab R1 is acting as a mapping server which is going to push the prefix seed level for the R6 and R7 which are available in the LDP domain. and then whole segment routing is going to use this prefix seed so there might be question in your mind when to use the mapping server so if my destination is in the LDP domain then we need the mapping server but if we are travelers if we are traveling from the LDP domain store the segment routing domain we don't need any mapping server requirement on the LDP side or either on the segment routing side only when it is required when you we are moving from the segment routing domains to the LDP domain in a nutshell if destination is in the LDP domain then only we need the mapping server So this is the primary path from R1 to R7 and for the backup path R2 is acting as a P node. So this complete 
Miss R1 and R2 is acting as a P domain. R3 and R4 is acting as a Q domain. So this is the backup path which is going by R1, R2, R4 and R3 to R7. So for the normal path, for the primary path, R1 is using the prefix set level 16007 for the destination R7. Once it reached to R3, R3 is going to do the implicit null for that because it's directly connected to R7 and it's going to do the implicit null and forward the packet towards the R7. And on the backup path, if you remember our earlier conversation, for the P node, we need to push the prefix seed. For the Q node, we need prefix seed. And if it is Q node, then we push the adjacency seed on top of the packet. So in this scenario, First, bottom label will be the destination label that will be the 16007. And the second bottom label will be the agency seed between R2 and R4, which is assigned by R2, that is 24 something. And then top level should be the label to reach to the P node. But in this scenario, R2 is directly connected to R1, so it will be the implicit null for that and it's not going to push any extra label on top of that. R2 will remove the agency seed label which is assigned for his agency towards R4. And then R4 is just swapping the 16007 with the same label 16007. R3 will do the implicit null and is going to forward the packet to R7. So let's check in the lab. So this is the router R1. Where R1 is acting as a mapping server for the destination R6 and R7. So here you can see that I have configure the index value for R6 and R7 so if we check the command for the mapping server so both of these entries for R6 and R7 both are active so here it Okay, you can see the index range, index value and the range. So in this case, we are just assigning it for the slash 32 for the single router, single prefix. Hence, the range is 1 here. So if you check the segment routing table, we can see the prefix seed for the all destination except R5. R1 is acting as a mapping server here and if we check about the LDP neighborship so here it is between R1 and R6 R2 don't have because it's a completely segment routing domain between RC, R3 and R7 R4 is completely the segment routing domain R5 is non MPLS set that is a plain IP4 and R6 is having LTP with the R1 and R7 and R7 has the LTP with R6 and R3. If we check the routing table for the prefix R7. Here we can see that backup TILF is pointing towards the gig 000 which is towards the R2 
रिपेयर नोड इज आर टू एंड आर फोर सो एज वी डिस्कस अर्लियर आर टू इज एक्टिंग एज पी नोड विद इम्प्लीसिट नल वैल्यू and r4 is acting as a q node with the agency seed level and you can see this is here it is tilfa link prediction and if we check this safe entry for that it says that for normal primary path which is protected R1 will push the 16007 and on the backup path on the backup path is going to push the implicit null agency seed level between R2 and R4 and then bottom level will be the prefix seed level for the destination which is R7 if we check the entry for this particular label it's saying that if we receive this label push it the segment routing label and then this is the backup path where it's going to push the implicit null 24003 and 16007 on the backup path so if we check about the r3 which he has received the implicit null from the r7 so if we check the mpls forwarding entry for that it's saying that if i get the prefix at 16007 just pop it and send it towards the r7 this is how ldp protect tlfa for ldp protection works so we checked it for the prefix r7 and r3 we can check it for the r6 so it is going via the interface gig 001 towards r4 and repair node is r4 and r2 but if you check the prefix 7 here you will not find any protected path so in case if we protect the path between r7 and r3 even though it is ldp domain but in case if we protect but still we will not get the tlfa path for that so first reason is that is it belongs to ldp domain and second reason is that even though if we enable it if we remember the criteria for that p and q node should be the sr enabled devices so if we talk about this protection between r7 and r3 r6 will act as a p node and r7 will act as a q node but problem is that both they both are non sr enable hence we won't get any protection for r7 on r3 and same is the case for the r1 to r6 if we check the route entry for r6 we don't have any uh, protection for that this is what it about the tilfa for ldp protection let's check for the ip protection tilfa for ip traffic so in this diagram r5 is acting as a plain ip4 this is the primary path from r1 r2 r1 r3 r4 r5 
and this is the backup path where R2 and R4 again is acting as a P and Q node. So if we, if we talk about the packet flow from R1 to R5, it is just plain IP packet. And if we talk about the backup path where R2 and R4 is acting as a P and Q node, So this is the packet for R5, then on top of that one it will be the agency seat between R2 and R4 and then implicit null level for, for the R2. R2 removes the agency seat and forward packets to R4 and from, from R4 anyhow it is the unlabeled. So it's going to forward it to the R5. So if we check the route entry for R5. So this is the normal path which is going via the protected interface with that is gig 0001 and this is the backup path which is going via the R2. The repair node is R2 and R4 they are acting as a P and Q node. So if you check this show ISIS fast reroute entry for that R2 is acting as a P node and R4 is acting as a Q node. So if you check this safe entry. So for normal primary tra traffic we don't have any label because that is completely unlabeled traffic. IP for plain IP for traffic. And on the backup path we can say that we are pushing the labels. First one is the implicit null. Second one is the agency seed so on the packet we can see the only one level that is agency seed level so this is the trace route via the normal path that is r1 r3 and r4 and you can see that is non mpls plain ip packet here it's very challenging here to test the traffic via the backup path because once we bring down the link between R1 and R3, it takes millisecond for R1 to run the SPF and then put traffic on the normal path, normal new means we can say post convergence path, post convergence path. So it's very difficult to capture the actual TILFA traffic here.